Next up is the Rocky Mountain West Pavement Preservation Partnership uh, discussion, and Mary Gail Pavement is going to talk to you about that. Um, she's been with the Montana Department of Transportation for 16 years and has been the pavement management engineer since 2005. And prior to that, uh, she was involved with the planning division of Montana DOT. So please help me welcome Mary Gay. I don't know if I should say good afternoon or good evening. Um, the Rocky Mountain West Pavement um, Partnership represents the 13 westernmost states, and we have quite a variation in geography as well as climate. Since the last meeting, we um, went from one end to the other. We were in Alaska, then Arizona, and then somewhere in the middle in Montana. In 2013 in Anchorage, um, that's when Map 21 was new and we were learning a little more about it. Um, so we had some discussions regarding Map 21, um, started to find out more, more what the performance measures would be. Regarding research, we learned some things from NCAT and MinRoads, as well as had a Sharp 2 workshop. Uh, treatments that we covered included the high friction surfacing, some hot and cold applied chip seals, as well as concrete preservation. Then we decided to go to the desert. And there, um, we continued our conversation on MAP 21, as well as learning about the ADA impacts in uh, regarding preservation. Had some pretty colored conversations on that one, the frustrations. Um, the emulsion task force went over their activities on chip seals, microsurfacing, and emulsion specs. And then we also heard about the joint effort with NCAT and MinRoad. The highlight of this meeting was getting a Crafco tour, tour. We first went over there in the evening and we had a crack slaying demonstration out in their parking lot. Then they gave us a really nice dinner inside the manufacturing facility, as well as getting a nice tour throughout the facility to see how the materials are manufactured. Then in Bozeman, um, we decided to change our format of our meeting. Instead of having our state reports, we asked each state to participate in either a presentation or a panel. So as a result, seven states gave 11 presentations, three local agencies gave five presentations, and they covered crack seal, crack seal or filling, concrete preservation, hot in place recycling, data collection and reporting, and documenting preservation savings. Um, the cost effectiveness through the performance curves and equivalent uniform annual cost analysis was shared by the members of our, our uh, cost effectiveness task force. Um, some of the treatment, other ones were the LTP pavement preservation experiment was also covered. Uh, this last year when we were in Bozeman, we had some issues with um, our board members uh, going through the transition of the steering committee. So we did spent this last year revising our bylaws. Um, we're, our cost effectiveness task force worked on the presentations they had in Bozeman. From there, it went to the research task force. And they authored a research needs statement called Developing a Framework for Cost Effectiveness Measures for Pavement Preservation. And this is one of our best accomplishments we feel that it was submitted to the standing committee subcommittee on maintenance and they voted it to advance it for an RNS for $250,000. And then as most of the other um, partnerships did, we surveyed our uh, members and developed a multi-year work plan. So we surveyed our members and we had 10 ideas out there for our work plan. We settled on four, uh, the first one being membership and partnership involvement, second's research, third's pavement preservation training opportunities, and four, strengthening our communication. Uh, okay, for priority uh, one, the membership and partnership involvement, um, we want to improve our um, communication within the partnership because we have had some fluid changes of members and we want to get that, make sure that we stay, keep continuity 
We want to look at what the barriers of some participation are so we can keep that continuity that is continuing from year to year and we're not losing our momentum. We also want to make sure and we include industry, local agencies, and academia more than we have been in the past. We want to draw more in by sharing what we're doing and also going to their um, venues and trying to bring them to ours. Our second uh, priority is research. We'd like to expand our um, preservation research roadmap by compiling our research projects, collecting technical briefs and instructional papers, and identifying needed pavement preservation research. Um, this is one area we feel will benefit agencies, pavement preservation professionals, and practitioners. And then our third and fourth priorities are uh, training and communication. Uh, that's one thing we, the, there's a lot of videos and other training opportunities out there online and we want to make sure we can get that out and communicate it to our members as well as people we can draw into our partnership. Um, since the CraftGo tour was so um, successful, we want to do that again get some more demonstrations at our meetings. And um, we would like to create a listserv, another way of communicating am amongst our partnership as well as with other areas. And that's it. Thank you. Do you have any questions?